Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Just recently I've started rereading a great spiritual autobiography that I read uh, just recently and it was so good that I started rereading it. And even just in the first few pages it was so moving and motivational and, 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 and touching that I thought how important these spiritual autobiographies are. And so I thought, hey, it's time to do a video about spiritual autobiography. So let's go. So I think the best thing to do is begin with the book that I've just begun reading and then I'll work through all of my favourite spiritual autobiographies, all of which you're just going to get a tremendous amount of information and, you know, you're going to be inspired. If you read any of these books, it's really going to move you. So the first book that I've just started is The Journey Home by Radhanath Swami and also one thing I'd like to say if any of these books um, interest you and you want to know more about it let me know in the comments and I'll do a separate video about the book a whole video about each of the books or the ones you want to know so The Journey Home by Radhanath Swami the Radhanath Swami he's uh, from um, the ISKCON the, the Krishna his guru was AC Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada who uh, I'll speak about next. And yeah, as a young man, Richie, his, his Christian name was Richard, and when he was a young man, he didn't fit in and he felt like there was more to life than just what society wanted to impress on him as a young man. And so he became interested in the counterculture and um, marijuana, LSD, you know, a lot of the... Um, he was a bit of a, a rebel, but as he grew, by the time he was 19, he, he wasn't even satisfied with the counterculture. And so he hitchhiked across the world and ended up in India. And it's just, it's amazing. I mean, this book, it was recommended, uh, someone on Joe Rogan's podcast mentioned it and I bought it. And this has been one of the best books that I've read in recent years. And it's become one of my favorites. So the Journey Home by Radhanath Swami, I highly recommend it, even in just the first two or three pages. It, it just really moves the soul and the spirit. And if you're having a hard time with COVID, some of these spiritual autobiographies are really going to help you to reassess your life and where where it can go. You know, there's, there's endless opportunities in life. So The Journey Home by Radhanath Swami is the first uh, autobiography that I want to share with you and the one that is ultimately the catalyst for me doing this video. The next book that moves on to uh, from Radhanath Swami is this one, Prabhupada, Your Ever Well Wisher. And this is um, Radhanath Swami was, was seeking God, seeking a, a way to worship God. And ultimately he found that way through um, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada and his ISKCON Society for Krishna Consciousness uh, and this is the yeah it's not an autobiography it's a biography about the life of uh, Prabhupada who as an elderly man I think he was in his mid-60s when he was called to go over to the west to go to America San Francisco I think uh, it's a, again an inspirational story he didn't know anyone in San Francisco, didn't know anyone in America, but Krishna, you know, would guide him and support him and give him strength. And so, yeah, he went over to America, formed um, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in San Francisco in a small uh, shop front. And ultimately, it's, yeah, grown and gone all over the world. So this is another great one. And he's highly influential among a lot of you know, the um, the spiritual practitioners would have learnt and been close to A.C. Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada. The next spiritual autobiography, which is an absolute classic, is Mohandas K. Gandhi or Mahatma Gandhi, you might know him as, an autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth. And this is a book that I've listened to on audio multiple times. And yeah, it's just his selfless service, his, um, you know, desire and need to help the needy is just an inspirational book. And this is a real, real great classic Mahatma Gandhi's biography. 
and yeah, just like all of them, some of them are, are seeking seeking God in some form. Some of them worship God in the form of service and help to others. And Mahatma Gandhi was definitely one of those later on in the dispute, I think, between India and, and Pakistan and that formation. Uh, when there was, there's a really great um, film as well um, by Ben Kingsley plays Gandhi. And that's a really great, if you if you don't really like reading and haven't got time to read this pretty thick book, then you can just watch the film, which is really great as well. But the book has a lot more detail, as always books do. And yeah, when there was some violence, you know, the protest would become violent. He was a, a big advocate of ahimsa, non-violence. When there was violence ongoing... He, he would go on a hunger strike and I think some of his hunger strikes reached into about 30, 40, 50 days, even more without any food. And in the end, he touched people's souls uh, and caused them to stop the riots and fight him because oh, Gandhi is, is fasting and he's going to die because he's not taking on any food. And he says you, he won't take on any food unless you guys stop the violence. And so Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Mohandas K., uh, my expert the story of my experiments of truth another brilliant autobiography there's too many classics to there's just too many classics too many great spiritual autobiographies so i'm gonna have to move on because i don't want to miss any out and i don't want to lose any so this one another absolute classic autobiography of a yogi by paramhansa yogananda i read this one when i was early on my spiritual journey and it's just an incredible book, incredible book. If you're not spiritually minded, you might read it and think that some of the stories in there are fiction, you know, that he's made them up. But when you read all of these, you see that when you, you know, when you open yourself more up to these higher powers, life can get really interesting. So autobiography of a yogi, uh, you learn also about his guru, Sri Yukteswar. And also his guru, Lahiri Mahashaya, and all of the spiritual uh, beings that Yogananda meets on his travels. This one, again, all of them are absolute classics, so you're going to have a lot of reading to do. But this one is up there among the best, just like all the others that I've mentioned. Up next, the next spiritual autobiography, another classic, I'm going to be saying that over and over, I think, is... Uh, the autobiography of the Dalai Lama, Freedom in Exile. Just a, a, another spiritual giant, isn't he? The Dalai Lama. And this is his own book. Uh, it's quite old. He wrote it many years ago. But it's just, yeah, I, I don't need to say any more. If you're interested in the Dalai Lama and his life, brilliant, brilliant. And again, just a just general word about autobiographies in general it, it, it's a very nice format it's a very nice narrative starts with the individual as a boy and you know he's normally dissatisfied or yearns for something more and then it's like the hero's journey he goes out seeks what he yearns and often with these biographies he comes to find it. So I'll read off another couple and then I'll run over the last few a bit uh, more quickly. But this one's uh, another one that touched me very deeply. And it, it would probably be more a psychological autobiography, but I think this one is highly spiritual as well. And if you read it, let me know if you agree with me. Uh, Carl Gustav Jung's Memories, Dreams and Reflections. And again, just another amazing deep and profound spiritual autobiography that I highly recommend. So yeah, there's just so many great books here. And the last one that I'll share in length, and I, I haven't mentioned this man's name too much on this channel, but this man has a, I have a great affiliation to his life and his works and his followers. And maybe I'll start talking about him much later on and in more depth. But this is a man that's touched me profoundly in my life. And his name is uh, G.I. Gurdjieff or George Ivanovich Gurdjieff or George Gurdjieff. And this is his second book that he published, Meetings with Remarkable Men. And now this one is it's loosely based on his life. It's not actually an autobiography. 
it's loosely based on the events in his life but this is again one of my favorites every book that i've mentioned is one of my favorites and i highly recommend if you're at a place in life at a crossroads or or you you want some more out of life than what the system offers any of these books would be amazing so this one meetings with remarkable men by gurdjieff who i will likely talk a lot more about on the channel later on so the next four I will uh, run through more quickly because they're, they're great books nonetheless, but they're not as influential in my life as some of these spiritual giants are. The first of those is uh, St. Augustine's Confessions. And obviously St. Augustine was one of the, um, the church fathers and he was highly influential in the formation of some of the church doctrines, I believe. And yeah, it's uh, written as a, his diary, I think, his confessions. But yeah, this is very inspirational. If you're a Christian person or you're interested in Christianity, this is like another way. He quotes often in there a lot of the um, the Bible. He'll, he'll bring a quote from the Bible and then speak about his own interpretation and his own life. So that's a good one. The next one is called Wild Ivy. Uh, the Spiritual Autobiography of Zen Master Hakuin. So if you're interested in Zen, this is a really great autobiography for you. And there's one story that's just jumped into my mind that I'll share with you. Uh, some of the Zen Masters, they would, um, I don't know what you'd call it, almost like a meditation competition, if you like. They would sit opposite each other. Two Zen Masters or two Zen monks or practitioners would sit opposite each other, you know, trying to remain zen and highly focused and they'd have wooden sticks and in one of the 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 competitions if you like or where they're just sitting together one of the people you know starts drifting off to sleep or losing um losing his focus and so uh Hakuin would would whack him on the head with his stick in order to get him back into his zen and there's many different stories but this again is another uh, yeah, Wild Ivy, another great spiritual autobiography. This one, not not for everyone, and it's, again, another um, really out there book, but a friend of mine recommended it, and I read it. It's called The Magus of Strovolos, The Extraordinary World of a Spiritual Healer. So another really great one that, Again, maybe for later on, if you've never read any of these, start with some of the earlier ones that I begin with in the book and later on. But yeah, this is like highly magical and really amazing. And the final book that I have to admit and be honest that I've not actually read, but there's many good podcasts that I've listened to um, by Tim Ferriss and also Jocko Willink. I'll put the images up so you can go and find those. And, and yeah, I, I really need to get to this book at some stage, but... Yeah, you'll probably forgive me because it's um, yeah about 900 pages of very small writing. And it is um, about the life of Miyamoto Musashi by Eiji Yoshikawa. I've probably butchered both of those names. But this is one of the foremost samurais in history. And he wrote the, the Book of Five Rings. And yeah, just listening to... Uh, Tim Ferriss and Jocko Willink speak about this book inspired me to buy it and I really need to make the time but it's a real big commitment to get into this book and so but yeah uh, from what they've said it's a, a, an amazing inspirational book Musashi by uh, Yoshikawa and so they're my books on spiritual autobiographies every single one of them will have a deep impact on your life and for me autobiographies in general have uh, touched me very deeply just because they're amazing books that's the books that I started reading golf autobiographies ultimately that's that's what got me into reading Nick Faldo to start with and then all the great golfers I would read about their lives but when I got on to the spiritual autobiographies yeah then my life just took a real uh, drastic change because of the lives that these great men have lived and the way that they went away from social norms and customs to pursue what they thought was important in their lives, it just really gives you a, um, 
you know, if you've got a yearning for something different, but you feel uncomfortable going outside of the social norms and customs, these books can really inspire you to do that. So they're my spiritual autobiographical books. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning, if there's any of them that you'd like to know more about, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get round to doing a video completely on that book, bring in a few passages maybe and a few stories from them. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed that uh, video, guys, on my spiritual autobiographies. Uh, if you did, hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be back soon with some more uh, book club content. All right, guys, have a great week and I'll see you soon.